In the time it took for me to get on this stage, trading robots, computers, traded more than a million stocks. Is that a good thing? So we'll talk about the technology to exchange stocks or securities. This is something that matters, okay? And to make that point, I'd like to take you back in time. A couple of centuries. This country, Holland, had produced the technology, had developed the technology to build these giant ships that could sail beyond the Mediterranean to destinations the world over, really. It was the onset of the golden age, the golden century, lots of prosperity, lots of growth, lots of wealth created, and citizens benefited. But there was another important technological innovation. People forget. Finance. Think of it. Would you put up the money to fund this giant ship? You wouldn't even know if it would make the destination. And if it did, would it come back with a cargo load in one piece? Lots of money, lots of risk. So the innovation, the technological innovation here was to let people buy a share, literally a share of that expedition, right? You buy a share, your neighbor buys a share, somebody else buys a share, and you share the risk. That enabled these companies, in this particular case, this shipping company, to fund itself and create those ships. You participated through your share. Now, not only could you buy that share, you could also sell it back. And then you get the cash back. And there was always somebody at what is called the stock exchange, share exchange. And this was another innovation. By some accounts, Holland, Amsterdam, had the first one. This is a picture I took with me from the Amsterdam Museum that shows that exchange, 17th century. Somewhere in the middle is a hookman, a specialist, who would be there for you to buy a share. He would quote you the ask price. Right? You can buy that share at the ask price. If you change your mind, you come back with that piece of paper, you could sell it back to him and you get the bid price. Of course, there's a difference between the two because the hookman needed to make a living. But ideally, for us, trading, we would la like to have that distance be zero, right? That we can transact these securities at zero cost. That bid-ask spread is a standard measure of the quality of securities markets. This floor market operated that way for centuries, and it was only maybe a decade ago that the New York Stock Exchange operated a floor market with some human, a specialist, being ready there for you to trade. Today, however, there's been a revolution. Markets, securities markets, stock exchanges have changed dramatically due to technology. If I show you the picture of a modern stock exchange, it looks like this. In the middle, you have the exchange server, matching buy and sell orders. But this time, they weren't walked up to this exchange server. They were sent in through electronic messages. Around it are the traders, the trading robots, employed by investors, by pension funds. Your pension fund is participating in this, believe it or not. Well, likely participates in it. Insurance companies. So all of these computers send their buy or sell orders into that middle computer, the exchange server, and it's matched, and securities or shares trade, trade hands, change hands. This system operates at dazzling speeds, beyond, or below, I should say, microseconds. A microsecond is a millionth of a second. So securities are changing hands at speeds that we can't even follow, because as humans, we clock at roughly a tenth of a second. If you start within a tenth of a second of the gun at the Olympics, you're disqualified, because your brain could not possibly have registered the sound of the gun in that time frame. 
a tenth of a second. These computers would have traded securities back and forth at least 100,000 times. And this is, I guess, what creates unease, right? We've created a monster. We've created a monster. There's this ownership of public companies transfers at speeds that no human can follow. Is this a good thing? I'd like to share some observations with you. First is, and I'd like to emphasize, because it's forgotten in the debate about electronic trading, is there's a huge benefit here. In any industry, if you replace humans by robots, it's cheaper. Think about car manufacturing, phone manufacturing, really any industry. So why not this industry, right? And to make that point, I'd like to show you how the bid ask spread. Remember? Difference between the ask and the bid quote, how that developed through time. So here is the most active US stocks trading in the 20th century. Yeah, I brought the entire century with me. It's roughly, you know, relatively speaking, the distance between the ask and the bid quote is half a percentage point maybe a full percent, somewhere in that range. Until in the 90s, it starts coming down, right? All the way to your right, you see that it's clearly tailing off. And that's the time where the US exchanges, stock exchanges, started to become electronic. If I bring this into the current century, the graph looks like this. And essentially, the, you know, the weird ask spreads keep coming down. Important. That stock markets, securities markets, exchanging securities become a lot cheaper. But there's concerns. The first concern people have is maybe there's too much volatility. Well, volatility, what's that? That's a difficult term. In finance, volatility is essentially the degree to which prices move. If the company that you own a share of just produced earnings, just released earnings reports that are way below your expectations, maybe the product didn't sell as well. You don't want to pay as much for the company as you used to, right? So the stock price or the share price should fall. And that's all good, because share prices should reflect the value of a company that helps allocating capital. But if these stock prices move without a reason, without any fundamental information being revealed, that cannot be good. That's creating risk without any return. To make that point, I thought about this a little bit. To make the point, I designed this what I call a O slide. All right? So, so here in... in, in September 19, 2002, United Airlines filed for bankruptcy. They handed in the paperwork to the US government. They were bankrupt. And that happens. Companies can go bankrupt. Fine. A couple of years later, September 6, 2008, to be precise, somebody scanned that document, put it on a web page. Google News picks it up. Bloomberg picks it up. Bloomberg, think about that as a Google News for, for finance professionals. And then the company stock tanks. Within a minute, it fell from $12 to below $4. Two-thirds of that company's value had disappeared. Two-thirds had disappeared. But to come back one or two hours later, look at it. Two hours later, we're trading at the same price levels. $11, almost the same price levels. So that spike here in prices was not related to fundamental news. In fact, the computers thought, you know, most certainly the computers used the textual analysis to quickly read that, you know, scanned document, essentially. And they figured out this airline is bankrupt, but it wasn't because humans probably realized that, hey, this is old news. They read the date and traded it back to its value. And that's the type of volatility we don't like. That's risk. That's, we don't like that. 
Another concern, another important concern about these electronic markets is that maybe there is a wasteful, from a societal perspective, there's a wasteful arms race going on. These trading robots just to want to be quicker than the others. And here is an example. This is a, looks like a beautiful picture, no? Could be a Dutch landscape. There's a farm there, a couple of trees, some grasslands, and a beautiful big sky. Well, it's close. It's not Holland, it's Belgium. Houghton, to be precise. But of course, the salient part of the, this picture is the tower that's right in the middle. That tower is almost as high as the Eiffel Tower. It was built by the US Army in the 70s. It was sold to the Belgian government early 2000s. And the Belgian government put it up for sale at the end of 2012. They hoped to get 400,000 euros for it. The auction start started, it started at 250,000 euros, quickly reached 400,000 euros, and at the end of the day, they got five million for this tower. Some high frequency trading firm bought it. And these high frequency trading firms, they employ these trading robots in the market. Why would they buy this? Well, they bought it because it's right in the middle. If you look at the map, it's right in the middle between London and Frankfurt. And these are two financial centers. And what they wanted to do with this tower is get information on what's happening in one market to trade on it quickly in the other market. Quickly meaning just a bit quicker than the others. And if you send that information through the air with microwave dishes, if you, can, if you look carefully, you can see those dishes. They put those dishes on top of the tower. You can see them at the top of this tower. If you send light through the air with these microwave dishes, it's, it's faster than if you send the same light through the ground in glass fiber cables. Just a tiny little bit, but that doesn't matter. You just need to be faster than the others. So how can you make money? Let me, make, let me just give you an example. If the, if the German stocks, you know, at this instant of time, drop in value, you are the first to learn with this technology in London, since the German and the UK economies are you know, tightly integrated, it's, it's a good bet that the UK will fall an instant later because the quality of these economies move together. Now, if you're the first to know, you would trade, you would sell in London before prices fall and then wait for prices to fall and buy it back an instant later. And we're, we're, we're talking about milliseconds here. And if you sell high and you buy low, you make money. And with that money that's coming out of somebody's pocket in the trading process, you fund this type of investment. And this wasn't only this tower and the refurbishing. Many other expenses are being incurred by these trading robot firms that one can ask, is this, is this useful for society? Yeah, maybe they help prices move by their trading, but prices would have moved any, anyways. All right, putting it all together, I believe that the way the securities markets work today, with these trading robots and everything electronic, is a better place, a much better place than the old days when there was human-intermediated floor markets. If you bring in the evidence that we have now, then the cost savings that I told you about, remember the lower bid ask spread? Those cost savings far outweigh the potential concerns people have. And these cheaper securities markets, they help good companies to grow and fund themselves to grow and thereby add to the strength of an economy, benefiting all its citizens. These companies, these good companies, can build their ships to sail us to beautiful and faraway destinations. <laughs>